So, good morning, everyone. Again, I believe we can start. Uh, we have quite a quite a number of people joining us. So, uh, allow me to uh, welcome you on behalf of the Roboband and Fact Robotics teams um, to this webinar and uh, uh, Roboband demonstration event. Um, uh, we are uh, very pleased to have you uh, here. And uh, uh, just a couple of rules and a couple of information points that you should note uh, before we jump into uh, the whole agenda. Uh, for your information, this meeting uh, is being recorded um, and this uh, recording uh, uh, will be shared with you uh, after, after the webinar, so you'll be able to access it and uh, maybe share it with your colleagues. Um, also, uh, uh, there will be a, a Q&A session, question and answer session after the demo event, so uh, please uh, write down your questions uh, uh, that you uh, want to ask uh, uh, to Thomas or, or Domantas. Um, so we will be able to answer them after uh, the, the demonstration. Uh, there will also be uh, individual demos uh, today and tomorrow. So if you haven't registered, uh, there are still very few places left. And uh, maybe we could squeeze you in uh, for an uh, for ind individual demo of the robot. Uh, uh, live on Tool Denmark uh, premises, who are uh, who have been very kind to host us, and and uh, we are in very good partnership with them. Um, and uh, 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 also um, uh, during the uh, the demonstration broadcast, uh, uh, our uh, Roboband engineer uh, Domantas will be commenting on some of the technical features, and uh, Thomas will be uh, talking more about uh, the the business, the the market need, and and and, and some of the technical features as well. Um, so basically, Roboband is the first, first uh, world's first uh, standard bending robot. It actually came uh, uh, from a really uh, uh, market pull uh, approach, and uh, there was a, very, a real need um, uh, in the market. And uh, 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 more about this, of course, uh, uh, Thomas himself will, will tell. Um, and also, uh, uh, this uh, just a short uh, information that the, the solution was developed by technical and business teams at, at Factobotics uh, and, and, and Roboband. Uh, so we are very uh, uh, proud to, to, uh, uh, to have been working on this solution and, and uh, we're even more proud uh, to show it uh, to you today. So uh, without further ado, I'm uh, transferring uh, the um, uh, the presentation and then the word to uh, Thomas Ronlev, the CEO of Roboman, uh, who will uh, share a presentation and show show uh, and tell more more about the solution itself. Thomas, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Domantas, uh, and uh, uh, hello to everybody out there. Uh, originally, when we should make this uh, presentation, uh, the idea was that the uh, uh, that uh, we would do it uh, as a, a on-site uh, demonstration. Uh, uh, the COVID uh, has made the, uh, us to change how we do it in, in, in reality, and that, that has then also given us a chance to have uh, people on board from not only Denmark, but uh, from, from a few other countries as well. Uh, so, uh, so we are very happy that you uh, all have found time to, uh, to, uh, to, to listen here. So uh, I will in, in, in a minute, they start on a, a small presentation of our RoboBend, where I will focus very much on why why should we uh, automate the, the bending processes uh, and, and, the, and, and and use the RoboBend the robot for, for that uh, and and a little about the, the technical features. Uh, uh, so, uh, but the, um, very much with the focus on, on on the business part. A robot is of course a Fantastic uh, technology, uh, but first of all, it should be a good business case for uh, for, for the companies that are using it. So uh, I will now uh, share my screen here, um, and the um, uh, so as uh, Dominic has said, the uh, Robobender is the world's first standard bending robot, and the uh, what I'm. Uh, just once again, going to uh, to talk about is both uh, on, on the uh, business side, why to automate the uh, bending process, and then the, a little technical walkthrough short about our team, uh, and then then uh, we will uh, do the demonstration, uh, question and answers, and then uh, how you could uh, uh, later on uh, book a time and come and see it uh, uh, when when possible. So. Why at all to automate the, the bending process? Uh, well, we I think all know that it's getting more and more difficult to find the uh, uh, machine operators. Uh, 
especially if, if you have uh, machines where you would like to uh, not only use it for, for the first shift, uh, but uh, uh, use more capacity on, on, on the machine. And, and this is a growth killer. It's, uh, if you don't, do not have the capacity, that means that you uh, have, uh, if you don't have uh, the uh, uh, operators, then you have lack of capacity. So you will have to say no to clients uh, or, or find alternative ways to, uh, uh, to, uh, uh, to serve them. So, and then it, it's partly because this, especially doing a, a bigger batch orders, a, a, it's, it's dirty and repeatable a, a work to do. And then the, uh, the young people do not want uh, to take such jobs. So uh, a little by a little, uh, the, uh, the market is being emptied uh, with the professionals uh, that, that knows how to do the, the, uh, the, the bending manually. And then if there is a strong business case, uh, uh, using the, the robot uh, as, as an alternative, uh, but that means it has to be mobile, flexible, uh, and deliver the high out output and uh, the high uptime on the machine uh, to make it a good business case. So RoboBend is then uh, your new machine operator. Uh, uh, it can control uh, most of the uh, uh, press breaks already in the market. Uh, uh, and uh, by uh, being able to uh, uh, take over the jobs of the uh, manual operators and then e even you know, make it the, uh, operate in the second and the third uh, shift the, uh, partly or fully on its own, it gives a higher uh, capacity on, on the press breaks uh, that you already have. Uh, and same quality every time. Uh, it's simple to program, uh, easy to use. Uh, it's mobile, so it can be moved uh, to and from the press break, and then uh, it, it simply delivers a very good uh, business case uh, for, for most of the companies. Of course, uh, everybody uh, has a, you know, different uh, setups in, in, in their production, uh, and then we have developed a little tool where we can go in and put numbers in and, uh, and help you uh, to calculate the, each of your uh, business cases. How much will you save uh, by using the robot? It's just an example. Uh, two shifts uh, uh, with a salary of 30 euros per, uh, per, per hour, uh, and then the uh, relatively small batch sizes, uh, 100 pieces in average. That means some of the uh, orders can be even 50 pieces and some orders can be a little more. 20% of the pieces are new. So that means uh, every fifth uh, project that you do is something that you have never been doing before. And with that, uh, you would have a saving of at least 115,000 euros. And then if you take also into account that maybe there will be uh, some uh, peak times where you have to outsource a little of it, uh, 400 hours per, per year, then it's even uh, getting uh, better the, uh, uh, the the payback and, and the savings that, that you will get. And this does not uh, even uh, take into account uh, that the, if you have problems sometimes with the uh, uh, with the capacity, you would uh, lose some orders or even lose some clients that you cannot uh, deliver to or deliver too late uh, too many times. Uh, or if you try to solve the problems, then uh, you may have to uh, buy an additional press break uh, to, to get more capacity. Now we buy the, the robot instead. So that is also something to put in. Uh, and then the, all the additional admi uh, administration uh, you would have uh, if to uh, all the time think about how to do the production planning uh, with the in-house and out of the house, uh, et cetera. All the things that you may not see directly when you calculate the, the uh, production cost, but when you look at the bottom line then, uh, and this is uh, in, in the end what is important. So how much, uh, did it really uh, pay back to you uh, on, on the bottom line? And then uh, once you get started using the robot, you will find out that the uh, when you learn it to know that there is a, a lot of innovations you can do around the, uh, the, the robot. And that is why it has been uh, fantastic for us to start the cooperation with uh, Tool Denmark. Uh, and then they, once again, uh, we are very thankful that, that they, we could not only install the robot, but we would also be allowed to uh, to keep it and, and, and do demonstration here uh, uh, so that you all can see how it, it, it works. So we have made the, an installation here uh, uh, and uh, which you will look at uh, a little later. So Tool Denmark uh, makes a uh, tooling uh, for, the, uh, for the press breaks and the, uh, imagine that you have uh, pieces where uh, the normal uh, bend would be five very sophisticated uh, bends uh, on, on, on each item. And with the tools that the Tool Denmark uh, would uh, produce for you, you would uh, 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 reduce it to two quite simple bends that you then do. So uh, you, you, uh, it, it's both uh, providing higher quality this way, and then you will have a much higher capacity because 
if you'd only use half of the time to do uh, the, uh, the production, that means that they, both the machine and the robot has time for, for other orders uh, as well. So all those kind of things will even improve your business case once you get started uh, having the robot there and you get started uh, looking at how you can innovate the use of the machine and the robot. So, of course, also a little from my side on the uh, the, uh, the robot so that we have just been through what they, they mainly consist of and then you will uh, see more uh, later on uh, when the, uh, my colleague Doman says uh, will uh, demonstrate uh, how it uh, really uh, works uh, when, when it does the bending but uh, just very shortly it consists uh, of uh, the, uh, the, the, the three uh, uh, units the feeder the main unit uh, and the collector uh, and then uh, the, the coupling system that makes it the mobile as well so uh, uh, um, it's a FANUC robot arm that we use. FANUC is the biggest robot arm producer in the world from Japan. They deliver spare parts, even for very old robots, they always keep spare parts. So this gives both a high quality and in the movements, the high speed, and then they, and also that you're sure that you always can get spare parts when need when, when be. And the, uh, the, the main unit, uh, which consists of a number of, of uh, sub uh, parts, where I think the most important is to mention the rail system, which makes it possible for the robot arm to drive uh, along the, uh, the, the press brake. Uh, it's also the uh, uh, repositioning uh, and then the uh, uh, um, positioning points uh, where you put the, the pieces uh, to uh, be sure you put it in precise and then also uh, so that you get the right quality, but also when you sometimes have to pick from a different angle that they, you then can pick the piece from another side. It's the feeder, which is made, the, as I usually call, more or less like a copy machine system. So you put in the pieces, stack them up, and, they, and then it, it picks, the, the robot arm picks uh, one at a time. There is a separate also that secures that it's only one piece that we can pick at a time. And the collector, which uh, can both be used to where you on, on a pallet, they uh, place them in a certain system that is pre-organized, uh, 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 or you put them down in, an, in a box uh, where it just drops in, in the box, you have uh, both opportunities. What is uh, really important uh, with, with our robot is that the, uh, the, the user face makes it very easy to use uh, and then they makes it easy to uh, shift from one uh, uh, item to the next item. Uh, this is what the, uh, is, is important and, and makes a, the, the good business case for you. That is that the, uh, you don't need to have, uh, it's, it's fine to have in thousands uh, uh, of, uh, of pieces uh, to, to bend at a time of, of the same kind, but the, uh, it's, it's also easy to shift from one uh, uh, project to the next. Uh, um, and and, the, uh, and that, that's the user interface that helps you to uh, uh, to uh, do the planning of, of the full day, if you want that, uh, where you have all the, the projects and then the, if it's known parts, then you just put in a, 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 with, with, the, uh, with the names of, of the parts and then it's, it's all planned up uh, for, for the full day. Uh, the, uh, uh, our system remembers uh, all the settings uh, and all the programs uh, if it's once being done. Uh, so, uh, and then the programming can even happen, not uh, only at the robot, but you can sit uh, in, in the office uh, and, and, and do the, the programming there and trans uh, transfer it to, to, to the robot. It's also very important, uh, the interface between the uh, robot and the, the uh, machine. This is the interfacing that uh, makes it possible for us uh, to take the control of the machine uh, so that the, the machine becomes the slave of the robot, so to speak. Uh, you convert the drawings uh, to uh, programs uh, for both the machine and for the uh, robot. And then the robot is uh, simply uh, from there on uh, taking over uh, demanding when the, the machine is uh, doing the, uh, the, uh, the bending, uh, uh, when the, the robot should pick up, put in, and then the, and the bending machine uh, Press break uh, once more should they uh, go in and, uh, and, and, and do the pressing of, of the pieces. The coupling system that makes it the mobile so that if it is so that there is one 
a time a, uh, during the week, a, uh, whatever, when you decide that you would very much like to uh, do a little of the bending uh, manually, you want to do some testing uh, of some new pieces or whatever, then you decouple the uh, robot uh, very simple and easily, and then uh, you uh, um, can move it uh, to, to the robot uh, uh, again, and then they, within a very short time, make it uh, ready for, for, for use again. Uh, um, and the cover uh, that is uh, partly in the organic glass uh, uh, to make it uh, look nice, uh, and the uh, uh, the way that it's uh, you know made compact and then in three units uh, that is placed, uh, so there's no space to get into the to to the uh, press break uh, is part of the safety. So there is no way where you can get in and touch neither the press break nor the robot. The, uh, you can of course open up, but then the robot will be stopping. So Dorman says uh, that I will uh, 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 let the uh, start the, in, in, a, in, in a short while to uh, to do and, and use and, and show us uh, how the robot is working. Will uh, of course also comment on it when when you see the robot in action uh, while it works. Uh, that is how it is. Once he has started it up, uh, he can sit and and comment how it works. So uh, so he will do that. But this was just a short introduction. What kind of parts, main parts, does the robot uh, consist of? And the team uh, that they uh, started the the, uh, the the company uh, is the the three gentlemen here. I, I'm the one of them. Uh, we have Justinas Katkus, that is the CTO uh, and the, the the brain behind all the uh, the technical solutions. And the Pierre Heindorf Iversen, uh, our uh, investor, and then the uh, uh, international business person that has a, a lot of uh, international. Uh, a business experience. So, so we are the three that they established the company, and then along with that, the partners like Danish Techn Technology Institute and and, and others that we have as as partners on the project as well. So, with that, I I think that we should get to it. With so I'm sure that you are looking very much forward to that. We are getting to the to the. Um, so the real demonstration of the robot, and the, and then the, when we have seen the robot in action, then the, there will also be a, a question and the answer a session where we will be uh, uh, able to answer all your hopefully many good questions afterwards when you have seen it in action. So now I'll uh, give shortly the word to uh, uh, to Dorman says uh, yes. again. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. So thank you for your presentation. Um, uh, so now we will uh, uh, jump to the broadcast of the of the uh, robot in action. Uh, so uh, and uh, Dormant as well will uh, comment on it on um, some of the technical features. Um, so while we're uh, in progress of, of getting the uh, broadcast on, uh, uh, I will just remind you that the Q&A uh, question and answer session will be after uh, the the demo. Oh, it's it's already on, so the, it will be after uh, the the uh, the demonstration. Uh, we will be able to raise the hand or write in in, in chat uh, uh, the uh, uh, your question, and we will we will try to to, to address that. So thank you, and uh, Domantas, uh, the, the floor now is yours. Domantas, you might be muted, uh, so please check your microphone settings. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is. We can hear you now. Domantas, you. you can hear me. Okay, sorry. So uh, I have here the robot, I inserted the pieces into the feeder. Uh, and now I will prepare, uh, I will talk about uh, the robot then and how it's working. So Thomas presented it in a brief way. So I will try to explain it uh, in a bit more detailed way. So let me start from uh, introducing myself. So I'm Domantas and I'm the chief engineer in Roboband. And we 
we have developed this solution to help metal industry companies uh, with automating press breaks. So as you can see, the robot uh, has already started doing what human operator would normally do. Uh, it started uh, picking up the pieces from uh, a stack, uh, then aligning them and putting them into um, the press break. So the robot band is actually just uh, like uh, in the place of a human worker, but uh, this lets the humans to do some other work, which uh, requires a bit more uh, like creativity, and lets them, for example, uh, operate a couple of robot bands. So in practice, you, one worker could operate three or four robot bands, which which would uh, increase the output of the whole company. Uh, and it helps to save time too, uh, as the robot can work without any human inter interference. So the how the whole system works is that there is a feeder uh, from where the, all the parts are placed and it works similarly to a printer where you put a, st uh, a stack of uh, pieces and the robot picks them one by one. And then uh, the feeder has uh, uh, additional sensors uh, and equipment such as separator, so to ensure that uh, the robot is picking up only one piece at a time uh, to, to save uh, some time and uh, to ensure quality of the band. So then uh, there is the main cell. Uh, on the main cell, we are using the fan uh, LRM8 200ID7 L arm. Uh, this arm has a seven kilogram payload. So in theory, uh, you could work with pieces which are up to five kilograms uh, because the gripper adds some weight. Uh, the maximum uh, dimensions which uh, are allowed for this version of RoboBand are 700 millimeters by 500 millimeters. Uh, so basically, you could you can take a sheet which is as big as the feeder plate and lift it uh, with the robot. So then, on the main cell, we have also an aligner which is responsible for calibrating the pieces taken from the feeder because there might be some uh, position errors. So we are using uh, a gravity operated aligner to ensure uh, that the piece is positioned and calibrated for the bending procedures. So from the aligner, the robot uh, moves straight to the uh, press brake. In the press brake, uh, the robot is uh, inserting the pieces at pre-programmed positions and uh, repicking him, repick him at them after the bend is complete. Uh, if there is a need uh, to reposition, also on the main cell there are two points called overturners, which are used uh, to change the gripping positions uh, because most of the pieces require some kind of regrouping uh, to be done in middle of the bending sequence. So we have two of regripping points. One is mechanical one, and the other one is uh, packing. Uh, this, uh, so these are the main components of uh, the whole cell, uh, main cell, and the last physical part uh, from the robo band is collector. So collector has uh, a big a full-sized uh, Euro pallet both on top of it uh, where the parts can be stacked nicely and uh, taken out uh, with a pallet truck uh, or simply just by get, uh, going in there and take the, taking them by hand. Uh, there is also an opportunity to choose different palletizing options uh, such as dropping into the box. Uh, so this method is 
more useful when working with smaller pieces and when batch quantities are very big so you can uh, basically take a piece and drop it into the box so uh, when you reach full capacity of the uh, pallet the robot uh, stops and notifies the operator for example using email that the, the pallet is full and you should come and change it so the robot can continue uh, working uh, also the operator is notified uh, when the feeder is empty and uh, when there are no pieces left so then also there's a sound coming and an operator uh, is also notified using email uh, that uh, some attention is needed uh, so then the operator can know when to come and uh, is fully free to do something else until uh, he gets some notification from the robot. Uh, so these are mm, the main physical uh, parts of the RoboBand. But of course there is some electronic side and programming side. So the biggest electronic side uh, for the RoboBand is uh, uh, RBMI or Robot Bending Machine Interface. So this interface is used to communicate uh, between the robot and the press brain. So using this system, we can uh, simulate the work of the human operator. And uh, instead of human operator looking at the press break and understanding in what state it is, top and bottom or bending. So we are using the bending machines uh, logic and inputs to determine in which state the machine is. And then we are using uh, this, the controls of the press brake to control it to start braking, uh, uh, to, to start uh, bending, uh, or hold the position uh, nicely gripped in between. So the robot could uh, move to a picking point. Uh, so this uh, interface is uh, available for most of the machines. Uh, also, some functionalities are depending on the press brakes controller and uh, if it has a lot of features or not. So we are basically uh, suggesting for some companies to increase their effectiveness uh, to upgrade to maybe a newer controller, uh, which will anyways add new functionalities to the old controller and it will like have a nice looking 3D interface and everything like that. And then it would be easier even to use uh, uh, with the RoboBand because there would be added functionalities. But as you can see, this press break uh, that we're using now, uh, it doesn't have a lot of like additional features. It just has a package, uh, which is just one axis and everything. Uh, is still compatible with the robot and it's working uh, uh, very nicely. And because of this, we can see that uh, we can connect to uh, most of the old press brakes and if we cannot do that, so uh, we have the option to install newer controller uh and it will add all of the features that we are looking for and it will add some of the features that you can use manually on your press break uh, so this is the main functionality of the abmi uh, and the other uh, thing which is very important for the operation of the RoboBand is user interface so user interface is uh, uh, made for two uh, operators. Uh, so one operator is uh, like manager, a uh, ship manager or a company manager, who is responsible for creating new parts, uh, inserting all of the information about the part, and uh, and then uh, making orders uh, for manufacturing. So you can put all of the information start of the manufacturing and uh, how many pieces there should be made and when all of this information is uh, created uh, the operator uh, can see it in his own user interface 
uh, and see what kind of orders are uh, are planned for today, for tomorrow, or at any date. And then he can uh, prepare for those orders uh, also because there is information given uh, what kind of uh, position the pieces are going to be stacked in, uh, what kind of gripper there has to be, uh, because we have a, a few uh, different grippers. So uh, for bigger parts, there sh should be installed a bit bigger gripper, and uh, it, all of this information is shown in the user interface. Uh, so it is easier for managers to see uh, and to plan their production and it is easier for uh, operators just to keep working and make no mistakes uh, uh, as all of the necessary information is given to the operator uh, in separate user interface. So uh, whatever features are there in user interface. So we have uh, all of the components which were which are saved and which are prepared for the uh, blending. So when you would like to start uh, to bend some pieces which were already set up and you know, uh, you, you, you are installed all the press break tooling and uh, check the, the positions of the uh, parts in the feeder, you can start uh, uh, this program and, and start manufacturing in a matter of a few minutes. So choosing between uh, uh, programs which are already set up is really fast and doesn't take a lot of time. So now we see that uh, the robot uh, has finished one batch of the parts. And as we prepare for the other one, uh, we're just going to take uh, the pieces out of either and load up the new program. So uh, in the meantime, I am going to tell you about uh, the offline programming. So for offline programming, we are using uh, Obelisk. And uh, for Obelisk, we are, uh, with the Obelisk, we have the opportunity to, uh, to set everything up uh, offline. So all of the programming is done uh, in a simulation program. And we can see all of the movements uh, uh, from the, for the robot. So how, what, what kind of information uh, would you need to create uh, new programs for the RoboBand? So basically what you need is a DXF file where the counter and bending line and then the drawing which includes information about so what angles uh, the bend should be in which direction and what are the dimensions of that so then when you have this information you're putting it into the obelisk and uh, after adjusting uh, gripping positions for the robots and checking uh, if uh, the movements uh, for the robot are fast enough and they are efficient, uh, you can generate the program. Uh, uh, after generating the program, Obelisk allows you to see uh, the simulation. Uh, and uh, during the simulation, you can see all of the movements uh, of the robot and how it would be moving. So it helps to uh, foresee the uh, some mistakes you might have done and to fix them uh, while you didn't have to go to the robot and test them uh, with the robot. After uh, programming uh, you, and making sure everything is okay, uh, the generated programs uh, can be sent to the robot and you can run it a few test points to see how everything is working. And uh, after uh, you have uh, tested it on the robot, uh, you can create a, a project uh, with all of the information and prepare it for the manufacturing. Uh, so you will be ready to manufacture those pieces at any time in the future. So 
basically these are all the major parts of how uh, the RoboBent works. Uh, well, what what is the uh, the other very important thing is safety, and to ensure safety, uh, we are using organic uh, uh, glass, uh, a, a kind of organic glass uh, which is called polycarbonate, which is very hard and sturdy uh, plastic. Uh, so. Uh, it uh, allows us to separate uh, human operators or our uh, people who are uh, working around the robot to be safe around it. So the robot cannot exit any of the points uh, uh, from the cell and the humans cannot uh, interact with the robot when it's moving. So for the sake of uh, better visibility, we uh, left one door open so we can see this uh, robot moving but uh, uh, during a normal operation it wouldn't be allowed so uh, humans couldn't uh, open the door because then the robots would be stopping. Uh, other uh, safety uh, features uh, uh, include um, emergency stops uh, and uh, uh, compressed air uh, sensors. So there's, for example, no compressed air. So uh, the robot also gives out uh, a signal that uh, the air pressure is too low and the operator is notified and the robot is stopping the movement also. Uh, if uh, there is anything wrong from the press break side, the uh, side door is open or something like that. So then the uh, press brake stops by itself because it has its own uh, safety system and the robot reacts to it too as we connected both safety systems. So uh, if you have some additional safety systems which are installed on the press brake, uh, we can, they're gonna be uh, connecting to them too. So the robot can stop the press brake if there is any kind of emergency or the press brake can stop the robot. Uh, so in this way, we are ensuring that operators are kept uh, safe and uh, there are no problems for them. And I think this covers uh, all of the uh, main parts for the robot uh, and how, how it works. So just to repeat myself in a short notice, uh, I can just you remind how everything should be looking if you're using RoboBen. So for example, everything starts for uh, that you get some drawings uh, with the parts uh, and how they're going to be looking. So you have to have some DXF file with uh, bending lines and contour for the pieces. Uh, and then you are putting this information into Obelisk. Uh, in the Obelisk you are uh, adjusting positions of the robot to get required uh, movements from the robot and to ensure that there are no collisions and that you are uh, efficient in the manufacturing plan. After you have generated the program, you uh, as a manager, for example, you are preparing uh, the order, putting uh, all of the necessary information uh, such as where this type of pieces should be in the feeder, uh, what kind of gripper should be used, uh, what tooling should be installed on the press brake and where it should be positioned, and uh, lastly, what kind of palletizing you are hoping from, from the RoboVent so the operator can uh, prepare for such a palletizing. So uh, from the manager's side, when all of these things are done, uh, it is done. And the uh, next steps are for the operator of the RoboBen to come and prepare the cell. So we have a modu modular cell uh, and the collector, main cell and feeder are all uh, separatable and easy to disconnect from each other. Uh, so if RoboBen is moved away, so the first thing would be to move the main cell to the 
uh, near, uh, near the press break and couple it to the ground. After doing that, uh, you can attach the collector and feeder. After doing these things, uh, you insert a pallet uh, with a feeder plate on which all of the pieces are stacked in a nice fashion and according to the information the manager has uh, prepared. Uh, after that, you, ha you should make sure that uh, you have installed the right tooling on a press brake and uh, after checking all of the information, you can just uh, start the program and uh, everything is ready to manufacture and the uh, operator can move uh, to prepare for a new piece maybe or to work on our machinery. So, and the robot can move uh, until the stack is, uh, as I said, uh, is empty or until the collector is full of pieces. Uh, Last thing to mention, I think, is uh, uh, the feeder uh, height maximum size is uh, like 800 millimeters. So if you are using a one millimeter thick, uh, thickness uh, part, that means that you are, have like around 800 of them can be stacked in one, uh, one go for robot. So if you take account that uh, one part is like one minute to bend, so, in theory, that would be taking the whole shift for the human op operator. So, that means that human operator, for example, uh, comes to the uh, RoboBand in the morning, puts the pieces into it, and then for the rest of the day, the robot is bending, and the operator doesn't have to uh, do anything except from time to time to just change uh, pallets so the pieces would have uh, a place to like, be felt that way. Uh, so at the end of the shift, uh, the operator can also come and put some uh, parts into the robot van and let it work after, uh, after the uh, human operator shift has been over. So you can actually get the notifications uh, to the email while the robot is working and if there is uh, gonna be any issues, it will be notified. And also we have an internet camera uh, installed on the robot band. So you can connect to it and uh, see how everything is working. So you can do it remotely from the office or any other place, just to make sure that if it's running, uh, you can be sure that uh, everything is okay. Or if you have had some notification, you can just check what kind of problem there is in, in the robot. So I think this uh, is uh, uh, all of the main parts for the robot and how it is uh, working. So, so thank you, Domantas. Um and uh, uh, I hope that uh, this was uh, an interesting insight into how it's working practically. So now we uh, can open the Q and A session. Uh, and there are in the um, uh, Zoom uh, options. There are uh, uh, several ways we can do that. So one, you can uh, uh, raise your hand. Uh, it should be in the participants. Uh, 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 option to do that. Uh, you can also, I think, uh, go to Q&A. There's an option to Q&A, so you can add a question and, uh, uh, and other people will see that. Uh, so you can just write it up or just write it in the chat. Any way it is, uh, uh, it is uh, any way is possible. So <laughs> any way you feel best uh, and, and most comfortable with. Uh, so please, please do that. Um, so we are kindly uh, waiting any any questions on the technical or the business side uh, you should be able to do uh, when you press the participants and it should be a raise hand next to your name I believe 
If that is correct, please check. Yes, I see Michael is uh, raising his hand. So I will just now uh, give the floor to uh, Michael Dongstead. Yes, Michael, you, uh, the word is uh, the floor is yours. So please unmute yourself and ask your question. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, very yeah. well. Yeah, I'm Michael Dongstead from company Machine Fabriking SKN. I uh, have a short question uh, regarding the time for programming, this part that you are showing on the demonstration. Uh, how long time does it take to program this uh, part from uh, start to end? So I can answer this uh, question. Uh, it, for those parts, it took uh, around uh, two hours to prepare because uh, oh, I had to prepare the press break programs and the offline programs too. So they would be uh, ready for manufacturing. So uh, more bands per part, it, uh, it increases this setup time. But for these parts, it took uh, around two hours to prepare. Yes, okay. Thomas, would you, would you have a, a comment or? Yes, I would also like to say that the uh, we are working on the uh, the uh, software for for, a, for for the programming and and, and the uh, what we need to enter it. Uh, so uh, so this is something that the uh, a, uh, will will be reduced. Uh, of course, it uh, will always take some time, but the, uh, the and, and and the more simple uh, ones will uh, be even uh, faster naturally. So. Uh, so, so the, uh, the, the the plan in the near future is that we will be down in in, in uh, something close to to half time of what it takes right now. Yes. Okay. And and what about the the physical setting up of the machine? Uh, how long time does it take to, yeah, if you have not installed anything and then connect it to the press break, and and then uh, physically set up uh, the whole machine, the robot and and the feeder and so on. What's the time for setting up that? Okay, I understand. So it it takes uh, from 10 to 15 minutes uh, to prepare everything and connect it. So I can just show you how it is, for example, the collector, how it's disconnected and moved away. Yes. Okay. So as easy it is to get out from the, to move away from the robot. So it is as easy to move it to the robot. What, what, what if you move the section where the, the robot is in? If you move that and you have to uh, connect it again, is it then necessary to make any adjustments in the program or? Uh, no, it doesn't need the to have. Between the robot and the press break. Yeah. No, uh, we have uh, like a coupling points. You can see around here, so this uh, red lever. So these are yes. uh, like uh, steel inserts in the ground. And uh, after moving robot, you move the robot until you put these inserts into the ground. So the robot stays in the same position every time. Okay, so so no no uh, changing of the program will be no, uh, necessary. No, no, no. no, okay. So it's just uh, there's gonna be some steel inserts but they can be just covered with a simple uh, plug, the holes that are in the, in the, in the ground. Yeah, okay. What, what are the, the price more or less for a, for a machine like this? Not, not with the special tools, but rough, roughly. Yeah. So then, probably it's me who has to uh, get in here. So, yes. uh, yeah. so uh, it, that there is a, uh, as you say, uh, like like when you buy a car, there is opportunities to buy some additional uh, things, including maybe also uh, 
some good tooling from from Tool Denmark, uh, etc. Et but the uh, uh, depending on a little of different needs uh, and depending on if we need to change the controller or not, you can say that that we are starting in in a little more than eighty thousand euro, which is a good half million Danish kroner. So uh, this is this is where we are starting for for the. Uh, uh, for the mm -hmm. robot and for the installation and then the, for making sure that that the, you get all the training uh, and then the uh, the first the uh, putting in the first parts so that the uh, it becomes uh, easy to to operate and then there is a time where we will also have a hotline so that if there is any questions after we have started it up uh, we will uh, make sure no matter if it's uh, something that is simply because you cannot remember or whatever we will be there uh, in in the beginning to make sure that the uh, everything is a uh, is the uh, working uh, as, as it should. So it, it's all included into the price. So it's not just getting the, the robot, but it's also getting it to work, so to speak. So it's so, including feeder and everything, the price for 500. It, it's including all, all the, the things that you have been seeing today. Uh, and it's including that that the, we have been uh, clearing out what kind of pieces it is that you want to use it for, and then the, uh, what kind of press break you have, and then the, uh, the interfacing with the press break, and then the uh, installation and then they are making it to work so it includes it, it's a full package that you get yeah, okay you talked about uh, changing the controller in, in, in what case will that be necessary uh, yeah as Thomas has uh, mentioned that there can be uh, a, a few cases uh, and then uh, one of the cases can be if it's an old controller where there is some uh, lack of functionalities that will make the the uh, the automation the uh, of of uh, of the press break, uh, I mean it, it's not impossible, but it will uh, lack some features that the uh, will make it the uh, slower simply uh, uh, because we have to do some programming around it the, uh, that will uh, that will make the, uh, the 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 machine and the robot they work a little slower. So uh, so that 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 can be one one uh, situation where it will be uh, needed. So uh, otherwise, in many cases, it should be possible, but the, uh, but but the. Uh, that 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 may be an, an, a, a, a need in some cases. Yes. yes. How how does it uh, work when you place the the, the part uh, against the stop in the press brake? Is, is it the force in the in the ro robot that uh, yeah decides when it's uh, close enough to stop, or is it the vision, or what what is it? How how does it work? Uh, I. Uh, talking about uh, how the robot is inserting the pieces uh, uh, horizontally or when vertically the press brake should stop? Yeah, both actually. Uh, so the press brake stopping vertically is done in the press brake controller. So uh, we are programming it so it would stop when it is in muting position. So most of the press brakes have this feature to stop it. Uh, so the pieces held by the press brake itself between yes. the tools, clamped between the tools. Yeah. And uh, the robot uh, knows the position where to put it and the baggage, the wall where it is uh, inserting the pieces. So there are some sensors which are uh, allowing the piece to be put in the exact position. Yes, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael, for your questions. Um, uh, does anyone else uh, have uh, any more uh, uh, questions or, or comments? The presentation was very detailed then. That's a compliment to you guys. <laughs> Yes. Um, so uh, uh, thank you. Thank you for the uh, uh, presentations, uh, Thomas uh, Dalmontas. So uh, Thomas, probably you, you can have the last word and then I'll, I'll uh, close, the, close the webinar by, by saying about the individual demos. Yeah. So uh, uh, once again, thank you for participating. Uh, uh, again, the, the COVID-19 in one way makes uh, things a little complicated, but uh, it all also makes us uh, remember that we should uh, be innovative. So uh, now we made it the, uh, as, as an online uh, demo, and uh, that gave uh, people from, from uh, different uh, destinations a chance of, uh, of, of joining the event. Uh, but the, uh, uh, for, for some of you, uh, uh, this is hopefully just a, a, an appetizer, and then the uh, uh, and, and, and then the, uh, 
and then uh, uh, you should uh, definitely uh, be more than welcome to uh, to, to come in and, and get it demonstrated in uh, in practice. Uh, so those are the two uh, beautiful guys that they, uh, is, is here permanently in Denmark and then they, uh, that can they, uh, show you uh, this uh, robot here by Tool Denmark. Uh, so uh, you're very welcome to contact them and then they, uh, and then they will uh, bring you uh, over to the robot and then show you how it works in, in, uh, in, in practice. So uh, uh, so this is the one thing I want to say. And the other thing, uh, getting back to where I started, that the robots is a, uh, is, is a very nice uh, pieces of uh, mechanics. Uh, but first of all, it should be a good business case for you. And then they, uh, we would be very happy to uh, have a detailed talk with you about how you do the bending today and then they calculate the, what could be the savings uh, if you uh, in, in your specific factory would uh, be doing the, uh, the, the uh, automation using our robo bend uh, and then they by, by this way getting both higher uh, capacity and then they uh, the savings and then the uh, and the uh, opportunities for, for, for growing your company. So uh, yeah, so please uh, contact those two guys and then they, let, let's uh, get in dialogue about the uh, showing the robot and then they uh, and, and talking about how it would be good business for you. Thank you, Thomas. Um, so uh, just very quickly to close off. So uh, just to mention that we do have, uh, uh, we are almost fully booked for the individual demos uh, today in the afternoon and uh, uh, also uh, tomorrow. Uh, but if uh, any of these times do not fit you, of course, please please contact uh, uh, Pear, Michael, uh, me, Thomas, uh, uh, or anyone else. Uh, we will be able to assist you and uh, and get you uh, booked for an individual demo, um, either on site or or online. Um, uh, so so uh, we will will do our best to do that. So thank you very much, uh, and uh, um, and have a nice day. And we are very uh, happy to have you had. Uh, to, to have had you here uh, today and uh, 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 and uh, and we look forward to seeing you soon thank you <laughs>